Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lan and I'm from Stanford Computation Mathematics Department and I work with Professor Susan Holmes in the Statistics Department and as I have been just introduced, I'll talk to you about Bayesian unidimensional scaling method that I have developed to uh, recover the ordering of samples in a data set. Uh, so what does it mean? In a lot of uh, data sets, including biological ones, there is an existing latent, so unknown latent continuum related to some underlying continuous process that governs the data generation process um, of uh, the recorded high dimensional um, samples. Um, so the observations might be recorded uh, not evenly spaced uh, along this latent one-dimensional manifold. And our task is here to recover this latent ordering of the samples and provide some uh, estimate for um, the uncertainties of these estimates, as well as um, generate user-friendly and efficient ways of visualizing that ordering and the uncertainties in the data. Um, so. The method is called the Bayesian unidimensional scaling, uh, and it is based on the idea of modeling the interpoint dissimilarities, so the pairwise dissimilarities computed on your original data as uh, the realization um, of the true underlying distance in the latent one dimensional space. So you can think of BUDS as the method for mapping high dimensional uh, observations to their latent 1D uh, coordinates. Mm. Since our method is Bayesian, we are able to provide some estimates of uncertainties of the um, coordinates that we recovered. Uh, additionally, through the varying um, the level of the noise, we are able to accommodate the varying dis uh, density of the data along the, um, uh, the data trajectory. So here um, I give um, the full generative model. Um, DIJs are here the quantities that denote the distance between XI and XJ in the original high dimensional space. And they are assumed to be gamma variable centered at delta IJ, which are here on the true underlying uh, distances between the coordinates in uh, 1D uh, interval. Uh, and these coordinates are here denoted as uh, tau i, and um, they are assumed to be distributed as um, beta variables. Um, the justifications for all the distributions and uh, the priors uh, are given in the paper, and you can refer to that. Uh, I don't have time uh, here to talk, uh, go into details, but the important part here uh, in this model is that I allow for uh, varying levels of error, here denoted by SIJ. SIJs are the factor for the scale uh, of the noise term. And next I'll talk about uh, how we go about estimating the scale function uh, for the noise of DIJs. Um, so uh, imagine here we have XI and XJ in high dimensional space, and we take the dissimilarities between XI and all K um, nearest neighbors of XJ and vice versa, and we compute the standard deviation of all these distances here denoted by the dashed uh, green uh, lines. And the standard deviation uh, basically encodes the local information and is taken to be the relative size of the noise factor in the model. Uh, you can imagine why, uh, why this actually makes sense, because um, the scale of the noise will be larger in the sparser areas where we have less information about the data trajectory, where you have a lot of outliers. This the similarities in the dashed uh, gray line uh, will have high variance versus um, the trajectory regions where you have a lot of data, um, where all these dissimilarities uh, will be uh, roughly similar. Um, so we perform the inference using automatic variational Bayes uh, method implemented in our STAM. And here I specify the 
full uh, model that I just discussed in, our, uh, in STAN, probabilistic uh, programming language. As you see, it takes only a few lines to write up all the choices for the prior and also to encode the likelihood function. Uh, and I highly recommend everyone who wants to implement some Bayesian estimation uh, method to check out our STAN since um, it allows you to uh, prototype and to try out varying a lot of uh, methods fairly quickly. Okay, so now moving on to the visualization part. Uh, here. I show uh, all the plots that we offer in the visualization um, interface uh, that you can uh, check out under this uh, link. Um, I will talk about each individual plot uh, uh, in the next few slides. Uh, and these plots will refer to the frog embryo transcript kinetic data set uh, published by Owens and others in their study of the frog um, embryonic development. Um, so on the right, we see two plots that are fairly similar. On the y-axis, we are plotting the recovered coordinates um, and their actual value. On the top plot, we see on the x-axis the rank of the recovered coordinate, uh, which is basically corresponding to the ordering of the samples that we found. Each individual point is the mode of the posterior samples we estimated. And uh, the error bars denote the 95 highest posterior density interval and uh, correspond to the uncertainties that we have of the coordinate. As you see, uh, the error bars uh, on the second half uh, of the plot tend to be smaller than uh, the ones from the beginning. Another thing that we can uh, observe here is that uh, the first half of the samples uh, vary uh, much more than the, uh, the rest of the data points, suggesting that the first, um, uh, the samples from the first um, part of the data trajectory are uh, rapidly changing in terms of their um, gene expression rather than uh, the, the last part which also suggests that the development process is stagnating. So uh, the direct comparison of the uh, recovered coordinate with the actual time, so here is the ordering of the hours post-fertilization, and you see that the ordering we uh, obtain is fairly consistent with the actual time, so the hours post-fertilization, uh, which uh, proves that our method um, makes sense. Uh, okay, so another set of plot that we offer is the projection of the data set onto 2 and 3D. Uh, on the uh, left, we see the two first principal component, and on the right, we see three first uh, principal components plotted together uh, with the mode of the data trajectory that we uh, recovered. The 3D plot is interactive and you can rotate it to um, look at different uh, parts of uh, the data trajectory. Uh, so the projection, as I said, is um, computed with the principal coordinate analysis, also referred to as classical multidimensional scaling. But uh, in the visualization interface, you can also uh, choose another dimensional reduction uh, method, uh, TSNI, and also plot the path that the method has uh, estimated. Okay, so another set of plots that we offer um, are the global density plots and the uncertainty of the individual plots, uh, individual points. On the left-hand side, uh, we see the data pl uh, points uh, plotted together with uh, the density, the overall density of the data in the region. So um, we are able to generate this plot because our method is Bayesian and we are able to generate multiple copies of uh, the similarity matrix uh, by drawing from the posterior. 
And then uh, we use the status matrix to uh, create the projection of uh, the copies of the dissimilarity matrix. Uh, on the uh, right-hand side, on the other hand, we have plotted the uncertainty <coughs> contours of individual selected points. So the user in the interface can pick which, for which um, data point he wants to see the uncertainty contours. And in this way, you can see uh, which region of the data trajectory you are more uh, certain about and uh, which part of the data trajectory the uh, coordinate estimates are uh, less uh, certain. Okay. So um, the next thing uh, that I'm going to talk about is uh, are these two plots. On the left hand side, we see the heat map of the data that has been reordered based on the coordinates that um, our method has estimated. Uh, the columns correspond to samples, uh, and here they have been ordered according to the tau coordinate that we have estimated. The features are ordered based on the inter, uh, inner product between the features and the tau coordinate. And we see here that the structure appears and certain um, here genes become expressed uh, at different varying uh, time. So you can see that at which mm, uh, time point uh, the expression starts uh, appearing. Uh, on the left hand side, we see the plot of individual features across tau. Uh, here, tau correspond to the actual time. So what you actually see is the gene expression over time of five selected um, genes. And you see that three of them uh, tend to decrease over time and two of them increase over time. And again, the user is able to specify for which features uh, he or she wants to plot the data for. We also uh, applied our method to other more noisy data set. Here I'm showing the results for uh, the publicly uh, available single cell RNA-seq data, which studies the dynamic of the um, gene expression uh, levels for mammalian cells. And um, there are 269 cells here uh, plotted. Uh, as we see on the bottom plot, uh, the tau coordinate that we estimate, uh, the ordering that has been recovered is roughly um, consistent with uh, the cell development stages. Here you, you might not see it, but it goes from the uh, early two cells up to uh, 40 uh, or up to 64 cells in the late uh, blastocyst stage. Okay, another data set that I tried buds on is a uh, microbiome, a Terra Oceans microbiome data set collected by Isonagawa and others. Um, and the study has been collected uh, to characterize the structure of the global uh, ocean microbiome. So there has been 139 uh, water samples collected from various locations of the oceans uh, around the world and uh, the samples were collected at varying uh, water depth. And the metagenomic sequencing was performed and then the taxonomic profiling was performed using the 16S gene. And you see on the bottom plot that the ordering that we recovered is uh, roughly correlated with uh, the ordering based on the water depth at which uh, the samples were collected, which is consistent with the finding in the original study. Uh, that the microbiome composition and the diversity is stratified based on the water depth and the temperature uh, of the water samples. Okay, so to show you that our uh, method is not limited to only biological data, I applied BUTS to the voting data from uh, the U.S. Senate uh, which include the binary yes or no votes from 500 bills. And the ordering that we have actually recovered 
uh, roughly correlates to uh, the political spectrum of the senators. And here we see that if you plot the, or, um, the senators according to uh, our recovered uh, coordinates, you see the Democrats separating from the Republicans uh, neatly. And what is uh, interesting here uh, is that the Senator Bernie Sanders, which, uh, who was at the time considered independent, is uh, plotted on the far left, which, <laughs> uh, which might be uh, reasonable as his policies tend to be considered socialist. Um, so, okay, I'd like to uh, conclude by um, uh, reiterating that um, BUDS is uh, meant to recover the uh, observations ordering in the data set that contains the latent continuum. And uh, this trajectory software uh, was um, intended to help visualization of that ordering and the uncertainties involved in the data set. And the method can be applied to a variety of uh, data types. And in the future, we would like to extend our method to uh, apply them to more complex data set with trajectories that include uh, bifurcations or branching. Uh, okay, here um, are the links to the GitHub repositories with the software, as well as the link to the web-based tool, which does not uh, uh, require any installation. Um, and uh, I also would like to thank my um, advisor, Professor uh, Holmes, as well as Chris and Julia and other members of our group. And also, uh, I'd like to thank the NIH for funding and the organizers of this conference. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. Um, could the next speaker already maybe come up and set up